Greetings, everybody. Listen, um, I forgot to add something. This Bible study is going to be on the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30. But my point is, whoever is, whatever group of people is the object of Satan's wrath in this time period, that is going to be who Jacob Israel is. So if most of the church world thinks that the you-know-whos in the Middle East are going to be the object, uh, well, since they think they're Jacob Israel, they're going to be the object of Satan's wrath. And the black Hebrews, well, you know, if, if they're the ones that are being persecuted, uh, they'll be the ones, you know, Jacob Israel. But personally, I think it's going to be Christians, the Europeans, the Caucasians, that are going to be the object of Satan's wrath. I mean, look at the media today. So, all right, um, whoever the object of Satan's wrath, that is going to be Jacob Israel and the time of his trouble. So pay attention to who is persecuted and by whom is being persecuted. Um, the pre-trib rapture crowd might be a bit disappointed when they find out that their theology is not quite going to work out the way they think it is. Uh, the people who they think are going to be persecuted are the ones, they're going to be the ones doing the persecution. Just like, read the book of Acts, people. The, the people that persecuted Christians in the book of Acts is going to be the same people that persecute Christians in the end times. With that being said, let's start the study. Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is June 27, 2020. This, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, this uh, virus thing is dragging on and on and on. I guess this is... The beginning of the end of the United States and probably the European Union too. Um, looks like we're never going to have a, never going to go back to what we thought was normal. So, well, that's just some thoughts. All right, uh, get out your King James Bible or Geneva. I'm not King James only. I also respect the Geneva. Matter of fact, I, uh, I'm learning a newfound respect for the um, Septuagint. Uh, some people have convinced me that it is a worthy thing. I mean, I haven't researched it totally, but from what I've been looking at, it seems like the Septuagint would be a worthwhile thing to have. I don't know. Uh, might be worth looking into. But um, I've just, uh, some Greek people that uh, know their stuff have showed me some things, and I'm kind of interested. Um, I'm going to have to live to be about 200 years old to really learn everything that I want to learn, but um, about a third of the way there. So, without further ado, let's hit Jeremiah chapter 30. The theme of this Bible study is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, today's the Sabbath day as far as I know, so I figured, hey, time to do another Bible study, right? Okay, I, uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel. 
Hmm, not the God of the whole world, right? The God of Israel. Saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Not the same people. Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, Jeremiah was the prophet that prophesied of the coming captivity. And I'm not sure if this, I'd have to look it up, but I'm not sure if at this point of history, if this was if they had already been taken into captivity by Babylon or not. But it doesn't matter because when he says, I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, it could have been in reference to the captivity in Egypt. And then again, it could also be talking about the uh, Babylonian captivity. Now, Israel had already been taken captive by the Assyrians. So, and then in the latter days, there's going to be another uh, type of captivity. And then after the Lord returns in glory, well, we'll read about that coming. Uh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Of course, I don't think that happens until the Lord returns. Uh, that little counterfeit in the Middle East is, uh, well, that's the, uh, if you ask me, that's the uh, gathering of the tares when the Lord talked about the uh, the parable of the wheat and the tares. He's gathering the tares into bundles to burn them. Matter of fact, maybe we should take a look at that real quick. All right, let's go to Matthew 13 real quick. Verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came, and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? Yeah, I thought you guys, you know, uh, I thought you planted the good stuff. Where's all these weeds coming from? That's the Bob translation. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. You know what? To the pre-tribbers, Jesus must be wrong because he says the tares get bundled and burned first. So the pre-tribbers, you know, oh, Jesus must be wrong. He, no, 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 Jesus. Don't you know the wheat gets pre-trib raptured out of here before that happens? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Yeah. That one verse alone destroys the pre-trib rapture. 
but uh, I can't get any of them to uh, pay any attention. All right, let's go to verse 37. Matthew 13, 37. Well, let's go to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us, you know, explain to us, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Uh, hey, Jesus, we don't get it. Can you please explain? We're dumb, you know. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 30. All right, let's see. Uh, for, let's do verse 3 again. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Uh, what happens when people are, when white people are scared? Don't they turn into, you know, pale like a ghost? What did the American Indians call whites? Didn't they call us pale faces? Have you ever seen a black turn pale? Um, I haven't. Have you ever seen a Mexican turn pale? I haven't. So, doesn't that destroy the black Hebrew thing right there? That one verse? Duh. Of course, they have their purpose in God's plan also. Verse 7. Here's the punchline. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, the twelve tribes. Jacob had twelve sons. Twelve tribes, Reuben, Gad, Naphtali, Dan, Levi, Judah, Joseph, Benjamin, you know, just to name a couple. All right, in Genesis 32, 28, we read this. And he, the Lord, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. So what does Israel mean? Uh, 
rules with God, prince with God. It has something along those lines. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. God himself changed Jacob's name to Israel. Okay? So, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, you got to understand something. Physically, it's the time of trouble, but he's going to be saved spiritually out of it. Let's face it. They can kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. And Jesus made this quite clear in Matthew 10, verse 28. He said, And fear not them, and fear not them, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And, of course, the Bible says that... Uh, in perfect love, and speaking of our love for the Lord, in perf uh, perfect love casteth out fear. So, you know, when you love the Lord, you'll have no fear. Matter of fact, the Bible says to come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. And that is found in 1 John 4.18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Uh, and then, the, oh, I should have read the, this, the verse before first. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now, judgment's different than wrath. Um, judgment's going to decide our place in the kingdom. Uh, some of us are going to be street sweepers. Others of us are going to be ruling ten cities. Others, five cities. Um, you know, that's, you know, placement, people. Placement. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, where else can we read about this time of Jacob's trouble? Well, I think it's going to be tied in with, uh, there's a number of verses uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, I think it's Luke 21, if memory serves me correctly, but I'm not sure. Um, Revelation chapter 12, uh, you know, let's, let's take a look at Daniel chapter 12. Verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, uh, Michael's an archangel, and Gabriel's the other. And I believe uh, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever, was probably the other one at one time. But uh, that's just conjecture on my part. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Ah, there we go. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. I mean, you know, there's a book of life. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, 
Uh, you're going to read about that white raiment, which is clothing. Raiment is just an old English type word or Middle English word, clothing. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. You know what? It says right there, he will not blot out his name out of the book of life. That's a scary thought, that your name could be in the book of life and your name can be blotted out. What does that do for the once saved, always saved, eternal security crowd? It kind of makes me think it's a, a lie from hell to get people to live any way they want. Oh, don't worry. You said a sinner's prayer. You know, you're saved. You're in the book of life. So if you want to cheat on your husband, cheat on your wife, no big thing. You're going to be in the kingdom anyways. If you want to be a hitman for the mafia, I hear it pays really well. Don't worry about it. Kill as many people as you want. You know, eternal security, once saved, always saved. I mean, that's pretty extreme, but I hope you get my point. He that overcometh, not just believe, but he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Wow. How about Revelation 20, verse 15? And whosoever was not found written in the, in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Ooh. Back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Now, this is talking about the resurrection. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Uh, that's Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. Now, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Why? Because we're going to have uh, white clothes, right? And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Wow, the time of the end. Just remember, every day we live on this earth is a day closer to the time of the end. I don't set dates. If if somebody asked Jesus when he was returning and he said he didn't know, the angels in heaven didn't know, only the Father knows. And if Jesus doesn't know something, you better believe I don't either. I don't set dates. I'll leave that for the Jehovah's false witnesses and many others. But thou, O Daniel... Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Hasn't knowledge increased? I mean, think about it. Um, up until about 200 years ago, horses were the main mode of transportation. In the last 200 years, we've gone from trains to planes and automobiles, jets, and, um, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you can go on the Internet and research knowledge. I mean, used to be it would take... Uh, maybe, I don't know, a couple weeks for uh, news from Europe to reach the United States by boat, by ship. Now it's a matter of seconds, really, you know. 
Has knowledge increased? Well, un ungodly knowledge has increased. Worldly knowledge has increased. What about godly knowledge? Well, mm, I don't think so. Well, uh, how about Amos 8.11 concerning uh, the words, knowledge of the Lord? He says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And if you ask me, that's today. I mean, you've got TV preachers galore, but the only thing they preach, it seems, is uh, send your tithes to God. Here's my address. So, back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Now, why is there two? Remember when Jesus was uh, resurrected, and he was in the, well, he, he wasn't in the tomb anymore. They opened up the tomb. And there was the, I believe it was two angels. Yeah, it was two angels. Oh, uh, and you got two, two here. Why two? Well, in Matthew 18 and verse 16, now they're quoting the Old Testament here, but it's in the New Testament. Matthew 18, 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. 2 Corinthians 13, 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. That's why. Because in, two or three witnesses was to establish something. All right, back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Now, I believe these are angels. Verse 6. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So, how long, you know, how long is it going to be? Verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Uh, this kind of language is in... I believe it's Revelation 12. We'll find out in a minute. That it shall be for a time, a year, times, two years, and a half. So, two years plus one year is three and a half. Three and a half years. And when he hath accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, who are the holy people? If you think they're the black Hebrews, well, their power is going to be scattered. Uh, if you think they're the you-know-who's over in the Middle East, well, you'd be wrong because their power is very powerful. I mean, they own the media. They own the banks. I mean, wow. Matter of fact, uh, they fulfill the prophecy of Esau breaking the yoke off from uh, off their neck of Jacob. Now, if you've never read the entire Bible, you are doing yourself an extreme disservice. 
Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. Now, Esau was somebody that God did not... Well, read Malachi 1. God said he hated Esau. Why? Because Esau hated the gifts of God. And I'm sure Esau hated God. And God was returning the favor. What can I tell you? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father... And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. See, Jacob had tricked his father into giving him all the blessings. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Listen carefully. And by thy sword, and by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. So Esau would be a warlike people. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now if you ask me, this is coming to pass. And if you look at the... Um, you know who ish encyclopedia it says that uh, Esau Edom is in modern you know who today verse 41 and Esau hated Jacob nothing's changed in life and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him and Esau said in his heart the days of mourning for my father are at hand then will I slay my brother, Jacob. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go back to Daniel 12, verse 7. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Why is the power of the holy people scattered? They turned their back on the Lord, and the Lord returned the favor. Verse 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, said I O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Ah, the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. In other words, at the time of the end, it's going to be opened and unsealed. Verse 10, many shall be purified and made white. Boy, those black Hebrews are going to look awful funny, aren't they? Uh, what's going to... You remember we read about the, the white raiment? Yeah, white raiment, remember? Many shall be purified, made white, and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. When was the daily sacrifice taken away? 70 AD, people, when the Roman army came and destroyed the temple. Why? Why? Well, when Jesus hung on that cross, just before he died, he said, it is finished. It is finished. He was the perfect sacrifice. All the animal sacrifices from that point on were an abomination unto the Lord, God the Father. You think about that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to read the Bible from cover to cover. 
The you-know-who's performing animal sacrifices after Christ died on the cross and said, it is finished, was an abomination. And what do the you-know-who's want to do? They want to start redoing animal sacrifice. Daniel 12, 11, And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Don't ask me because I'm not exactly sure. But go thou away, but go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of thy days. When it says he's going to rest, his body's going to be dead, but his soul and spirit will be awaiting the resurrection. All right, so. Now, let's see. Uh, Revelation 12. We're just going to skip this because I've covered Revelation 12 numerous Bible studies. Numerous. You got anybody, guys and gals, anybody want to know where this Bible study is, I'll be more, just click on my name, go to the home page, click on playlists, and go down and you'll see um, Revelation 12 revealed or something like that, and you can take a look at it. I mean, I've, I've covered this so many times, it's, you know, I just don't want to make this a three-hour Bible study. All right, but... Um, Revelation 12, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So that's roughly three and a half years. All right, skip down to, uh, let's see. Skip down to verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So that 1,200 and something days is roughly three and a half years or 42 months. I believe there's another witness to this in uh, Revelation 11, verse 2. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, or nations, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, which is, a, you know, three and a half years. Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue Forty and two months, which is about three and a half years. You know, a time, times, and half a time. At twelve hundred and sixty days, it all ties in. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah chapter thirty, verse seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I might, I might just look at Mark 13 and Matthew 24. We might take a look at that. You could take, you could read it on your own. I did an entire study on, uh, Matthew 24 revealed. I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I've got over a thousand Bible studies on YouTube I mean, I can't even remember all the stuff that I've posted. You know, I've had people say, oh, do you, did you cover this or that? And I have to think about it. And it's like, yeah, I can remember doing a study, but which study is it on? I don't know. I mean, there could be, there's hundreds of hours of studies. It's hard to remember them all. I mean, I've got a decent memory for some things, um, but... <laughs> Not that good, unless the Lord gives it to me. So, Verse 8. 
For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke, whose yoke? Esau, Edom, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king. And remember, Christ is of the line of David. And David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none, none shall make him afraid. Boy, that's going to be a nice, wonderful day. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee a measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. See, at this time, there's nobody to plead Israel's cause. But after Christ comes, guess what? There is. There's an intercessor. What is an intercessor? It's a, it's a go-between. You know, when you go to court and you're before the judge, your attorney, your lawyer, is your intercessor. Pleads your case. That's what Christ is. There is none to please thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one. And that was the Babylonians and the Assyrians people. Oh boy. For the multitude of thine iniquity. Why did the Lord chastise them? Why did he beat them? Why did he punish them? For the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. You know, uh, when, like I've said a few times, when I went to college and the instructor, the teacher, the professor, whatever, said something more than once, write it down, memorize it, because it was going to be on the test. Let's look at the end of verse 14. For the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Verse 15. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. And that's P-R-E-Y not P-R-A-Y. When a lion eats a gazelle, the gazelle's the prey. When you get on your hands and knees and ask the Lord's forgiveness, that's praying, right? I know, that's the obvious. Verse 17, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. 
I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and will have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Boy, those are that's some comforting words right there, people. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. A continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. What's a whirlwind? Uh, let's see. Cyclones, tornadoes, hurricanes. Guess what? Remember that uh, hurricane that hit New Orleans? Well, guess what? There was supposed to be a gay pride parade. Oh, Katrina, right? Yeah, there was supposed to be a gay pride parade when Katrina hit. Uh, it got canceled. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it, and until he hath performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it. In the latter days ye shall consider it. Let's read Mark chapter 13. And then... Uh, we're going to read Isaiah 53. Because I think uh, you could also read the parallel uh, chapter of Matthew 24. Okay, Mark 13, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and of what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And guess what? In 70 AD, that was fulfilled. Uh, there was a revolt by the you-know-whos in Jerusalem. The Roman army stormed the Jerusalem. They put up quite a fight. They really did. Um... Uh, but eventually the Roman army came in and took it over. And somebody set fire to the temple. And in the great heat of the temple, the, all the gold melted and went into the cracks of the stones and the rocks. And the Roman soldiers uh, tore the temple apart brick by brick, stone by stone, and scraped all the gold and threw it down. This was fulfilled in 70 AD. So when the you-know-whos tell you that the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, well, you got a choice. You could either believe them or you can believe Jesus. I pick Jesus. The Wailing Wall, from my understanding, was 
fort, uh, I think it's Antonio or something like that, a Roman fort. So they're praying at a Roman fort. Yeah. There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? In other words, when are you coming back? Or, you know, what's, what's going to be the end? Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Take heed, listen carefully, lest any man deceive you. That's, you know, he's telling them, don't let anybody trick you. Verse 6, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Guess what, people? This right here is enough to warn you the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, comes first. Try telling that to the pre-trivers. You, you, you can't tell them. They're not going to be here. They're so positive. That's, that's it. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when, shall, when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes. A lot of those people. You know what? Uh, the you know, U.S. Geological Survey, they haven't even been reporting. But only about 10% of the earthquakes that have been going on. There's a bunch of them. It's really been kicking up. It's kicked up a few notches, a few notches. And there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines, oh yeah, and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Time of trouble, people. Jeremiah, the time of Jacob's trouble. These are the beginning of sorrows, but take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues shall ye be beaten. Uh, Noahide laws, anyone? Look it up. N-O-A-H-I-D-E laws. Noahide laws. Look it up, people, if you don't already know it. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. Oh, Jesus, you don't have it. You got it all wrong, Jesus. We're going up in the pre-trib rapture. We ain't going to see this. Well, that's for those other people. That's, that's what the pre-tribbers actually believe. They don't believe. They don't believe that God would ever let them suffer for their faith. I mean, really, 10 of the apostles died for their faith. Paul died for his faith. Stephen died for his faith. Millions of Christians in the last hundred years have died for their faith under communism in Russia. But God forbid pre-trib rapture believers would ever have to suffer their, for their faith. Oh, no, that would never happen to us. Oh, we're the bride of Christ. God would never do that. God's not a wife beater. I mean, come on. Really? Yeah, they tell you this is for the other guy. That's not for them. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. It's funny. They say this is for the you-know-who's, but this is happening in the synagogues. And who hangs out in the synagogues? I mean, they just have no logic at all. It, God, God blinds them, their eyes, it seems like. 
For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Oh yeah. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. And when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. In other words, when you're, if your lot in life, if it's the Lord's will to be, to be brought before these people that are going to kill you for your faith, don't think about what you're going to say. Just clear your mind, and the Lord will speak through you. And that will be, that's your uh, guarantee that you're the Lord's. I've only had that happen to me one time where the Lord spoke through me. And I'll tell you what, it was a humbling experience. One time. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father of the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And that name is not Yeshua. They don't hate the name Yeshua. What name do they hate? They hate the name Jesus. That name is the most hated name. It's hated. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end. What? But Jesus, you got it all wrong. Haven't you ever heard of eternal security, once saved, always saved? What do you mean that we got to endure unto the end? I mean, come on, get with the program. Uh, that's the uh, TBN uh, gospel, or is it the 700 Prophets of Baal's Club? I forget. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I think I'm going to believe Jesus on this one and not the 700 Club. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Guess what, people? In 70 AD, when the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, uh, they actually pulled back. And all the Christians that believed, well, I think it's um, Matthew 24, I think it is, the companion verse gives a better explanation. But uh, the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, and then they pulled back. I think, they were awaiting reinforcements. There was another one or two legions coming. And all the Christians that heeded Christ's words, they fled to the mountains. They, they left Jerusalem. The Roman army gave them an out. God the Father, of my opinion. And then when the reinforcements arrived, they surrounded the city again, and all those that didn't believe Christ were slaughtered. Upwards, I've read accounts where upwards of a million Jews were slaughtered under, you know, the, I think it was like three years or something. Uh, it went on for like three, three and a half years. But at the end of it, they were crushed, totally crushed. Verse 14, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And you know, this could be a prophecy uh, that needs to be, that could be fulfilled again in the future. Because oftentimes the Lord will do a, a partial fulfillment 
and then a ultimate fulfillment at a later date. Verse 17, But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. This is going to be a time of trouble, people. Verse 20, And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the, day, the days. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. So when the world tells you, Oh, the Messiah has come, uh, eh, wrong. Verse 22. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. That's Don't we read that? In, um, uh, well, I, I could show you in, uh, I think it's Thessalonians and in Revelation. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders. Miracles, people. To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Uh, the companion scripture is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I guess we're going to go verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And uh, almost all your Bible teachers so-called will tell you that this is the Holy Spirit taken out of the way. You know, if the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way and removed from the earth, nobody's going to get saved. I mean, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is what convicts people of sin. Personally, remember in Daniel, we read about uh, Dan, the Michael the Prince. I think Michael is the restrainer. That's my opinion. If you disagree, that's fine, because I can't prove it, but neither can you disprove it. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine, but it, it can't be it can't be the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way, nobody's going to get saved, okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed." whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. All right, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 13. Uh, let's see. Verse 11. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Um, guess who did this? Elijah, the prophet, did. So he's going to mimic the powers of of Elijah the prophet. Verse 14. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as 
would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Doesn't this tie in to Mark 13? I think it does. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Let's go back to Mark 13. Uh, let's see. Verse 22. Verse 21. And then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. Lying miracles, people, right? To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation... Ooh, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. This is in the book of Joel. This is in the book of Revelation. Talks about the sun being darkened and the moon not giving her light. Verse 25, And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Remember the parable of the wheat and the tares? The angels are the reapers. And, uh, you know, the harvest is the end of the world. Yeah, I know that was an hour ago, but, you know, it ties in. Now, let's take a look at uh, Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Ah, where is this found? It's going to be found in Isaiah chapter 53. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So let's read Isaiah 53, verse 1. And we're going to close this out. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness that, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Who is this talking about? Christ, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we dis esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, these are not the stripes of a zebra. When somebody takes a whip and beats somebody with a whip, the skin is split open and there's a stripe on them of, of raw red flesh and blood. Those are those, that's the stripes. I, I can hardly, I can hardly fathom what he went through before he even got to the cross. Uh, some people reported, uh, what was it? Was it Mel Gibson's uh, 
the passion or whatever. They said the beating went on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I imagine some people actually enjoyed watching that. Not the believers, by the way, but... Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, many, not all, many. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Praise the Lord, people. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't even consider myself worthy to even read this stuff. You know, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him. In Jesus' name, amen.